We've been tasked with a special mission to get to the top of Mount Eek in the Benabui Ranges. No tracks, limited winch points, sketchy rock climbs. We've got the sidetrack boys, we've got Torbs. This is how we got here. What took y'all so damn long? 1800 miles, man. And exactly a rodeo. Then you boys must be thirsty. Sounds like a great idea. We ran out of moonshine. Keep them hams the rockets in. You guys heard from Charlie? We heard from Charlie. Oh, great message from Charlie. Where are you guys? So I hit the wrong one. <sighs> Probably should get going, eh? Bendleby Range mission to blaze a new track from the clubhouse to the peak of Eek Hill. This opportunity was presented to us by Charlie, the owner of the Bendleby Range. And the whole point of cutting this track is to open up a new adventurous opportunity for thrill seekers who want to take their more capable full drives for a thrill ride. Any trees around or what sort of, what are we expecting? It's going to be a real mix mate, there's lots of solid rock, steps, scrabbly surface, the areas where there is small shrub and bush, and then on occasion, totally open rock face, and then again, there'll be wooded areas, so it's, it's gonna have a real mix of terrain. This yet to be cut track is going to require experience and all the necessary recovery gear. It's not gonna be an easy track. Once we get there, we're still gonna get down. Hey Charlie, is that the clubhouse down to the left there? Yes, mate. So yeah, we're turning left here and curl anyway. All the way from Perth, we carted the tyres in on the trailer because we figured we might need something a bit more robust for what we're doing. So we brought the trepidors with us, the play tyres. I've put internal bead locks on, that's what the red valve is for. Kevlar sleeve with a tube inside it, that's at about 50 psi. This allows me to basically drive on flat tyres. This might make up for the lack of flex. Setting tyre pressures, adjusting suspension and making all the preparations for the vehicles is one thing. The other side of this is preparing ourselves physically and mentally because the forecast for the days ahead is in the high 30s and the low 40s. It is going to be a stinker and that is going to take its toll on us. That's when we're popping down, this yeah, is where it starts. Can, you can drop in there right away, okay. and that'll, be, that'll commence uh, passage to the mountains, mate. Cool, we're starting straight away. Up into it. Straight into it. 50 metres in, and already... Nah. We need the chainsaw straight away, boys. We haven't even left the uh, clubhouse yet. Just snip a few of these little dead ones off, I think. Get it out of the way. But how much we have to clear and what we're going to encounter, let's find out. This 
yet to be cut track is going to follow this creek bed all the way to the base of Eek Hill. Just go easy. Keep it coming. We have four vehicles which are set up completely different. Not only in the accessories we've bolted onto these vehicles, but also how they come from factory. For example, Mark's Defender is likely going to be the best vehicle for the task. Nick's GU Patrol is also not a bad choice for this type of terrain. Great flex, and with that extra weight and the longer wheelbase, care does need to be taken. And speaking of heavy, let's look at the heaviest of them all, Torben's 79 series. Big canopy on the back, rooftop tent. These 70 series are not the ideal vehicle for this type of driving. However, they can do it, but they will get hung up on those low lead hangers, and I share the same problem. That's the lead for hangers. One advantage that the 79 has, on the other hand, is low down torque, which is ideal for climbing over these rocks, as slow and as steady as possible. Come on, need a locker there, Ronnie. Your right rear was just spinning. Yeah, I'm getting hung up with something. Might try and hook it right here. Being in front is not that easy. I'm the first one to go through it all. So essentially, I am Captain Guinea Pig. Uh, Ronnie, uh, you might be doing some damage to your rear box there. Getting panel damage out here is a real risk and it's something we're all aware of. And simply just driving and keeping an eye on where you're going yourself is not enough. You've got to rely on everyone else. It would be a good habit to check everyone's tyres and we look in the mirrors, eh? And vehicles in front just to keep an eye on them because it's a very high chance someone's going to stake a tyre. Yeah, you're all looking good at the moment. That is a bloody good idea. Torbs, you're two on the back there, they look pretty good. Let's hope the other two on the back don't just randomly fall off. Oh, sorry, that's what we were checking. <laughs> this bit's just all um, diff bangers, eh? That's about the only problem. Yeah, might actually move that big one there. Yeah. All right, well, let's get the gear at least. We'll try to drive over it and see what happens to it if you want. We're disagreeing on the path to take. I've decided to straddle the edge, but I honestly think everyone's not too sure what they want to do yet. So they're waiting to see what I do first. Right. You just ripped the rock out. The whole side of the rock just gave out. This is what you call between a rock and a hard place. I didn't expect the rock to actually explode and and just rip apart, that's that's surprising. Do we just get me back out and we find a different way? Or do we proceed this on a different angle? We don't know yet. We're sitting on the leaf hanger. I will compare this to solving a three and a half ton puzzle on moving rocks. That's the best analogy I can give this. That needs to actually go up on that second rock, I reckon. It needs to go right up there. I reckon a bit of road building will sort this out. Oh, that was hard work. Got there in the end. Which way are you going? Well, I may as well go that way now. You don't want to do that one now? Well, you've carved out half the rock for us all. It's <laughs> a nice cut in there. Do you want this where it was? We'll just get up there. It's good to have a couple in reserve to chuck in if we need them. Okay. One thing I'm really looking forward to seeing over the next couple of days is how these four vehicles are going to tackle each obstacle in different ways. And are coils really that much better than leaf packs? I think Ronnie did the hard work for us there. A couple of attempts by him, but yeah, um, a lot easier coming through after him. Get torps through. We have definitely spent more time outside the vehicle walking around and spotting each other than we have inside the vehicle. And it's bloody hot out there. Yeah, 
Mark's defender loves this stuff. In fact, I think Mark does too. Yeah, good. Very nice. He really made it look easy. Oh, <laughs> just. Oh, I just made that. Charlie reckons what we've done so far is just a warm up. The real stuff is still to come. And only Charlie knows what's up ahead. I think the front vehicle is definitely very interesting. You've got to clear the path. actually got a flat but because I got the bead locks internal bead locks I can drive on it flat but it's putting a bit of air in it buy some time I don't want to change it yet because there's an alley corner still to do and that's what sliced up my tire many hands make light work This is the most difficult corner yet, especially for the 79s. Well, we've got a few options, I guess. Ronnie's making his exit over there a bit less severe. I think we might be able to winch this from my patrol back there and just move it a bit so then we can break it up. We've had a few attempts and it just, yeah, that rear box just wants to get smashed, so move it out of the way. The best way around the rock is to move it. Bit of encouragement with the sledgehammer, the crowbar, and the winch. Torps, watch your bloody digits, mate, and watch those feet. That rock was just a tip of the iceberg. It's freaking huge, man. Yes, now we're talking. Too bad for the uh, qualifying for the actual track. It's bloody good. Ronnie's up in front. We tail at him. Yet another tight turn. This one with a greater risk of body panel damage. Turn up a little bit. No, not the toolbox, not... Oh, damn it. So I'm out of the first bit. First vehicle out. Oh man. I don't think anyone's thought it would take that long. That was pretty tough. And from what I've heard, it's much tougher stuff coming up. All right, let's get everyone else through. Hopefully Nick squeezes that patrol through better than what I did. Subject of vehicle damage, well, Mark just entered the chat room. I'm gonna have to fix it up there, Mark. That's all cool. Well, today was an epic day. The Sidetrack boys kind of called camp. 
and it's probably not a bad idea because we had a bit of a sneak peek up what's up ahead. There's nowhere really to camp, so this is the flattest spot we're going to find. And so the mountain is just behind us. The sunlight is just hitting it right now. But today was epic. It was a lot more challenging than I thought. It took a lot longer than I thought. Getting five cars through, including the camera car as well. Have a good night. Wake up tomorrow nice and fresh and keep cutting this track through. Engines are running, vehicles are heating up, we've got to cut in the day two track. And everything's going to get steeper. All the effort yesterday, everyone had a brilliant sleep. Today's going to get hot, and as the days go, it's going to get hotter and hotter. Half of least resistance, here we go. I reckon it's going to be a lot harder than yesterday. Wish us luck. We've got a fair bit of clearing up ahead. What are we talking, heavy stuff or light stuff? All hands on deck. I think we've gone about 15 metres from camp, dropped straight into this creek bed. I think there's a fair bit of light bush that we're just going to trim off. Marshall main concern, especially this part of the track, it's all the snake wood. I've staked so many times in the past on this stuff. It's pretty unforgiving. There is definitely a lot more to clear today than there was yesterday. And given it's so hot already, it's taking its toll. Yep, easy, easy. Finally, we can drive about 150 metres until we have to clear again. Your nasty stake is coming up on your right hand side. This is going to require a spot. Yeah, mate, I'll um, just come up behind you there and I'll get out for you. Wait, that wasn't 150 metres, that was like 70 metres. And it's surprising what you can do to a rock with a sledgehammer and a crowbar, if you really want to move it. That hit me on the face. Pretty gnarly section now. <laughs> Yesterday's starting to seem like not much at all. Some nice off-camber stuff, probably the first off-camber stuff we've had just behind us here. Pretty decent steps where your spider and wheel placement's pretty much everything. Um, still doable, confident in your spider. Good. I think we'll get the vehicles up a bit further and put a vehicle here and get a, a good look at it. Yeah, nice, nice. A day and a half of constant spotting and driving on some real technical stuff. Our confidence is sky high. Yeah, I'll put the rock a bit further back. Yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. Stay on that. We also understand each other's vehicle and vehicle lines very well now. But all it takes is one mistake to put doubts in our minds. Doubts when you're four wheel driving or spotting is the biggest risk in my mind. That's just a sway bar. Okay. That's just his diff. Not a lot of margin for error on this section here so wheel placement is very limited when we're all coming up here there's one more to go Torb's bottomed out with his leaf bracket right here that just took this piece out that's from my diff here this is from Nick's diff and his sway bar up here so it doesn't matter which angle we're taking or which wheelbase we have everyone just seem to be smashing on this rock here so the max tracks have got us off a couple of times here and a bit of rock packing We'll see what the defender does. 
shorter wheelbase and maybe a little bit more clearance. Now that it. Hard. Just straighten up a bit there, Mark. Yeah, yeah now he's got that down, right hand down hard. Or is that three? We can go. First one to clear it. Just ahead of us, a really interesting rock formation. Something that's going to really wow these guys. They're going to have to do a lot of work building, track building, building a bridge to get between a couple of massive steps. So can't wait to see it. What's coming up is going to be pretty cool. Charlie was in line when he said it was going to get more difficult. Finding the path of least resistance is um, actually a challenge here. I don't want to touch, uh, I don't want to touch grass trees. But this thing here is like a few hundred years old. Days, that black boy. I don't want to touch that. That dead tree goes between these two. That one there? Up through there. We've got to bridge that, get up there. Things are really starting to heat up now. This oh is the God. biggest challenge we've faced so far. Nice. Good line. Given the tightness of this turn, my wheel placement is very limited and I can't see anything. I'm totally relying on my spotters. Leaf hanger. Sometimes getting out of the vehicle helps you understand what it is your spotter wants you to do. Alrighty, with one vehicle up, everyone else knows it's possible and they know which line to take. Let's go. So yesterday was definitely a challenge for the cars, that's for sure, on the 70s anyway. A few uh, good leaf hangers. After passing that track, I thought, yeah, we should be good today, but this is tenfold. So this is all about wheel placement here. With Torb's being the third vehicle on this section, we've got a bit of a routine happening. And we're definitely getting our money's worth out of these Max tracks. They have been used and abused. Build a bridge and get over it. All that weight these angles we get on, there is a lot of driveline stress and it's got to go somewhere. Lucky last, Mark's going to have a go in his Defender. Will he make it look easy? Probably. Alright, that's all four of us. But there's still a camera car to go. That camera car has followed us through everything that we have done. There is no alternative. Everything we've done is the only way to go and has been the path of least resistance. Spending the best part of two days on technical four-wheel driving, constantly thinking about everything, the simple things can sometimes catch you out. Ronnie's really in a, <laughs> a bit of a predicament actually. He's jammed his rear end right between two right, well, between two crevices, so we're thinking a bit of a winch. Might just give him that little bit of help he needs. Where's between a rock and a hard place again? 
two wheels trying to climb the bank. Our road building is now hitting my diff. Gentle winch and see what happens because I'm really loading up the drive line down there, trying to force it up. The tree is quite thin. However, we don't need much force from it. All we're doing is being smart and taking the load off the drive line. Now on some shaley stuff. Got a nice hill climb coming up. Uh, I think most of the crew is a bit concerned about it. Maybe I should be as well. I think it might be all right. And then there's a long climb to the top. And the Max Track's got an absolute flogging. Feast of like so messed up. Oh, holy shit, that was close. If anything goes wrong, it's all up to us. Self-reliant, no one else is coming in here. Go back. back. This is, this is yep. The safest way forward is to pack up that hole with max tracks and rocks. That should level out the vehicle enough just to get Mark through. That was going over. After much contemplating and consideration, we're pretty exhausted too. There is a faster option, uh, which I did like, but the risk is higher. And the boys have found a safer line, but it's gonna take a lot longer and a lot more work. So it's probably the smarter option to take the safe line. But I feel that we're still gonna be out here tomorrow. Hopefully we'll get to the top today. So all we gotta do is get out tomorrow, but We'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens though. You just don't know. A lot of these sections are taking a lot longer than what we thought. Others, surprisingly, a lot quicker. We'll get back in the cars and see where it takes us. We've sort of taken a different route, as Ronnie said. It seems like a better path. Um, and just the way we are now, uh, Ronnie can't get past me until we get up further. So, looks like the patrol's got the lead. Ronnie can rest easy and follow behind, I guess. Nick, I'm not sure if rest easy are the right words here. However, I can switch off a bit of brain power because I can see your line now. Doesn't feel great. If I come unstuck here, I'm rolling down there. Can't it, Doesn't feel great. One thing I've noticed over the couple of days, off-camper sections with coal sprung vehicles, Nick and Mark feel real uneasy. That's like the worst situation for them. As opposed to a leaf rear vehicle, stiff and rigid, it doesn't feel as bad. That's all four vehicles up. However, we cannot go any further because we don't know which way to go yet. Time to find the path, clear it, and perhaps a bit of road building. I reckon we found a good spot to drive up. Well, everyone's happy with it. They're gonna just chisel a little bit of the earth away. We've had to cut a couple of logs. 
not very uh, destructive what we've done so it's a good path in that sense it's probably the safest path for us not to roll down the hill they're going to chip it away i'm going to find a flat spot to camp for the boys watch the sun go down over that hill there what me and mark are doing is taking out the angle a little bit because it's quite loose you could drive it but it's just it just kind of lumps here a little bit and we're already on an angle so there's really no need to risk it anymore we're also opening the track for other people to drive which is also the reason why we didn't take the the risky side because charlie wouldn't want to put um just the general public at the risk of driving up that one we also decided that the risk was a bit too high for the reward when we can actually just work a bit harder here and get another line looking forward to the coldies of camera don't you that much I must admit, this doesn't look like an ideal place to camp, but we have no choice. It is a flattest area. However, the effort it took to get here today makes this place feel pretty special, and that view tops it off. Time to cook some dinner, sit back, and enjoy some ice cold bevies. Eek Hill, see you tomorrow. Fingers crossed. Good night, Australia. See you in the morning. It's day three and I've resumed my guinea pig roll. Yeah, left corner on that side of that rock. Like here? And then there's one above that and you want to go left on the other side. Okay. Hill, we're coming for you. That's going to leave a mark. Might need a little bit more clearing on the top here. Just made a mistake leaving the locker in as I made the turn, and on the side slope of the rear locker in, the rear skidded out, especially when I tried to turn more to the right. With a bit more clearing done, it's time to get Nick and Torben up. Mark, on the other hand, is a little bit reluctant and a little bit concerned about the steepness of this hill. My biggest problem is going to be when it gets steep. The defender's gearing is still way too tall, so on hills, it really struggles to get going. All of this kind of stuff, not too bad. It could just idle through, but I think later on today, apparently it's getting steep. Might struggle. And there's a lot of work ahead of us. A lot of work. We've got to keep the line as straight as we can. Don't want any side angles. So where we can, straight line. Yeah, we're just leaving that room at all, but that's good. All four up, beautiful. I was a little bit worried about that one. You know, I have had a bit of a tune. Um, so revs below 1200, I have increase fuel a bit so down low it's starting to pull a little bit harder so I reckon that has changed my ability to climb a steep hill which is great news. Got to just cruise up the ridge line uh, obviously there's going to be a few trees we're going to take the lesser of two evils and remove the more dead looking ones leave the fresh growth and the ones that are alive taking none is the best option the job at hand requires removing some. How do you get the chainsaw and I get the sledgehammer? <laughs> Uh, I got a chainsaw ticket. <laughs> While the boys continue clearing the lower part, Mark and myself are going for a long bush walk to find the easiest line to the top of the ridge line. Everyone's a bit exhausted from the heat. I don't blame them. A lot of people are keen to stop, but I want to keep pushing because every day that goes by, the temperature's going to get hotter and hotter and it's going to make our job harder and harder. So I'm super keen to try and get up there tonight. Finding the right line on the first attempt is super important because reversing here could end up in disaster. Hmm, where do we go from here? Nick and myself have made it to what looks like the ridge line, possibly our final staging platform. 
to reach Egg Hill. It's now up to Torben and Mark to overcome the hidden challenges we found on our way up. Winches back out, this time with a lot more urgency. Being stuck with your foot on your brakes at such an angle is not fun. Well, the gearing me up there. Just got a little bit steeper and just stalled out really. Couldn't really give it any more revs. Um, so I've honestly I've been expect I've been waiting for it so. And there it is, Eek's Peak, right in front of us. So close, yet a lot of work to get there. Charlie's motorbike is that blue dot down the bottom. And this is definitely the most sketchiest part yet. There's been equal amounts of doubt and encouragement thrown around. This one is playing with our heads. This part, like it's doable, but there's some serious track building to be done. Like that's, in my eyes, that's the dodgiest thing we've, it's not just a, I mean, there's nothing to win shot unless one car gets past first. That's it. And like, there's nothing to hold you. It's not like those big rock banks where, you know, you might tip your car over. Yeah. Which you wouldn't want to do, but here, if you go, yeah. you're gone. 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 Right. Yeah. Other than this, I just think it's good wheel, like wheel placement, like good spotting. After some discussion, we all decided we didn't come this far to fall that short of completing the mission to Eek Hill. So here we are, smashing rocks and packing holes. My rock just cracked into three. That means I've gone up to four now. A fair bit of work needs to be done. After all the rock packing, we had a driver and spotter discussion. Who should spot who? And here I go as a guinea pig for the final time. My heart is pumping right now. Mistakes you cannot make here. There's nothing to stop you should you slip. Marco's a good spotter. Feeling really comfortable with him spotting. I reckon. Spotter of the trip. Nick and myself have got our vehicles within 200 metres of Eek Peak. It's now time for us to help Torbs and Mark get to the top. Oh, this is sketchy. What do I look down for? How do you? Yeah, start moving now, you're hard. Once we get the boys to the top, we can do a four car convoy to the peak. I can't believe we're actually doing this. Yeah, pretty special. We made it, baby, we made it. First 
vehicles on each peg. First hand to touch each peg in the vehicle. <laughs> nice one, Torbs. Eight, three days. Not bad. Okay. Right, Good boys. Good work. That's a thing. An hour ago, I was not driving that, I was walking home. Yeah. <laughs> I was going back to Charlie's oh, yeah. place and now. Yeah, got pretty it. cool. That is so freaking awesome. Have a look at this place. First vehicle ever to do the whole track that we did to the top here. Now we do have to get out of here. Oh, what? You may be able to see that on side track. It'll be on the screen if you can. <laughs> Down some of these, but uh, I prefer going uphill for sure. 